I'm absolutely delighted to be here. The question I asked was, why was I invited? That's not for me to say why I was invited, but I want to tell you what Lou Holtz is not. Number one, I'm not a politician. I have no desire to be in politics. I don't think I have the leadership qualities. I'm not a magician, even though people say I tinker with a little bit. I'm not a singer. I'm not a dancer. I'm not a jogger. I do absolutely no exercise. I love what Abe Lemon said. He said, do you jog? He said, oh, no, I want to be sick when I die. <laughs> I am not an intellect. I am not very smart. When I graduated from high school, I desired to matriculate to the University of Notre Dame, but they said I wasn't smart enough to go to school there, which I could understand. But what I've not been able to understand is they think I'm smart enough to teach there. We came out here and we beat Southern Cal. We were both 10 and 0. We stayed over for a Notre Dame prayer breakfast. We went to Disneyland. And here came the AP photographers. They took a picture of our captains, Tony Rice and Anthony Johnson and Ed Bocar with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. And it's a true story. And they took a picture of Lou Holtz with Pluto and Goofy. <laughs> Not an exaggeration. It's true. And the next day, they ran a picture in the AP that said uh, Lou Holtz with Pluto and Goofy, which did not bother me. But they put in bold letters, Lou Holtz is a one in the middle. <laughs> Look then, important ladies and gentlemen to self-image, nor is intelligence. But I have three simple rules. They're all based upon the Bible for our football team. They're the only three rules I have for our children, the only three rules I have for myself. And I tell our athletes, if you honor these three rules, your self-image is going to grow and you're going to be successful. And you look at any successful individual, you're going to have adversity, you're going to have problems. I've never known anybody yet to achieve success that didn't have problems. Anybody that's ever achieved success is going to have adversity. I told our football team when I went to Notre Dame, we will be successful if enough people care. There isn't any problem we can't solve, whether it be drugs or the problems in the street, if we have enough people care, but you've got to have enough people care. That's where it all starts. I told our football team in Notre Dame we would not win because I was there. We would win when we cared. And we opened up, we played a great game against Michigan, but we fumbled five times and we lost. And we went up to play Michigan State, another outstanding football team, my first year at Notre Dame. And I said to our quarterback at a critical time in the game, we're going to run right 324 SXP pass. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I understand that means absolutely nothing to you. What I did not realize at the time was it meant absolutely nothing to our quarterback either. <laughs> That sucker didn't have a clue what I was talking about. <laughs> and the whole year went that way. We did not win at Notre Dame when I first went there because not enough people cared. It so happened that my son Skip had gone to Notre Dame prior to my arrival and my first year he was on that team. We came out here to play Southern Cal. We had a losing season my first year. We're playing Southern Cal with a quarterback by the name of Rodney Pete. So I want to tell you this. Of all the people in this world, I don't know if anybody can be a better role model for young people than Rodney Pete in my dealings with him. An individual I had tremendous respect for. Well, maybe you remember the game was on national TV. With 11 minutes to go in the game, this true story, we're down by 10. And Southern Cal had the ball fourth down and five. Went back to punt. We put on the punt rush. Figuring we blocked the punt, would score, we'd only be down by three. But with 11 minutes to go in the game, we, rough, we rushed the punter. We did not block the punt. However, we did rough the punter. Now, the young man who roughed the punter happened to be my wife's son. <laughs> my own son, Skip, roughed the punter. I could not believe it. As they came off the field, I was so upset I forgot the one basic rule we ought always remember. 
when people need love and understanding the most is when they usually deserve it the least. And as he got to the hash mark, I was so upset, I said, what happened? He said, didn't you see it? I don't know when I've been more frustrated or upset with my son by the time they got my fingers off his jugular vein. <laughs> Southern Cal had the automatic first down, went down and scored with nine minutes to go in the game. Notre Dame was down by 17. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you the whole attitude on the sideline changed. Wasn't anything I said, but all of a sudden we had enough people cared. We had enough people care about one another, encourage one another. They made a commitment. They were not going to walk off that field a loser. And in nine minutes behind a tremendous athlete, a great person, Tim Brown, Notre Dame scored 18 points, won the game 38-37. And since that time, we have been 33-3. and Not because of coaching, but because you get enough people that care. You get enough people believing themselves. And I want to tell you three simple rules that if we follow on our football team, I believe we will be successful. Rule number one is what I refer to as a do-right rule. Do what's right and avoid what's wrong. And if you have any doubt, get out the Bible. It's right to be honest. It's right to be on time. It's right to be loyal. Just do what's right. If you do what's right and avoid what's wrong, you're going to like yourself. The second rule we have is do the very best you can. God put us on this earth to be the best we can be. Not everybody can be All-American, All-Conference, First Team. Not everybody has the ability. But God gave us talent and ability in different areas. Ladies and gentlemen, not an individual in this room that does not have talent. I cannot sing. I cannot dance. I have absolutely no rhythm. But when we went to the Fiesta Bowl, I took our football team to see different things, to see that other people have talent. I took them to see the... Phoenix Sun Laker basketball game, how much talent people had. I took them to see the Phoenix Symphony, to watch 50 violinists move the bow in perfect unison. And I said, you think you're great athletes? I can't get love enough. You get off on the ball together. <laughs> but everybody has talent. I took them to see the Nutcracker Sweet Ballet in Phoenix. And I got scared. They liked it. They thought... <laughs> And the last rule we have on our football team, ladies and gentlemen, is a simple one. And that's a golden rule. Just love other people as much as you like to be treated. Just a simple rule. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what's really amazing and done to me? That many times I will treat total strangers with greater patience than I will my loved ones and the ones I live because we want to make a good impression, so we'll treat total strangers and we'll have patience. And we think because of the people we live with and live with and bleed with and play with and cry with gives us the prerogative to vent our frustrations. And ladies and gentlemen, that's not right. We need to love people. There are three questions everybody asks. You ask of me, you ask of Mary, you ask everybody the three questions. Every husband asks every wife, every parent of every child. Question number one, can I trust you? My wife and I have been married together this summer, 58 years. 29 apiece, but 20 together, 58. The only reason she can trust me and I can trust her is we both do what's right. If I do what's right, athletes are going to trust me. If athletes do what's right, I'm going to be able to trust them. But ladies and gentlemen, you cannot have a relationship with anybody if we do not trust one another. We've got to be able to trust one another regardless of our backgrounds, regardless of our age, regardless of our religious belief. And trust is only generated when you do what's right. And the second question everybody asks, are you committed to excellence? Do you want to be good? What made this country great was a commitment to excellence. That we all want to be the very best we can and we're going to take the talents and abilities and we're going to utilize the best we can. But the last question everybody asks is by far the most important. And that is, do you care about me? That's the question everybody asks. The people that aren't quite as fortunate as others are saying, hey, do you care about me? Do you understand the problems I have? 
And that's a question everybody asks, and it's the most important question. And we've got to make sure that we treat other people as we'd like to be treated. We look at them in their situation, put ourselves in their situation, and make sure that there's love and there's feeling. 